It's The Real News Network, and I'm Greg Wilpert in Baltimore. The president of Sudan, Omar al-Bashir, has apparently been put under arrest after five months of relentless protests throughout the country. He was president of Sudan for 26 years. The military council that arrested him initially announced that it plans to keep the country under military rule for the next two years. It then retracted that statement as protests continued to disrupt the country. Although Omar al-Bashir is wanted for war crimes by the International Criminal Court, the Military Council announced that it will not extradite Omar al-Bashir. The reasons for the protest actually had to do with the tripling of the cost of bread in December 2018, as well as the spiraling cost of living in other areas. The protests resounded around the world, largely because women took a prominent role in the leading and organizing of the protests, especially Ala Salah, whose photo speaking to the crowd of protesters went viral. Over 60 protesters have been killed since then, and uh, Su Sudan's security forces have arrested hundreds until the military intervened and took the side of the protesters. Once that happened, news of Omar al-Bashir's fall was carried by word of mouth across the country. Joining me now to discuss the situation in Sudan is Khalid Aman. He teaches political science at the African Studies Department in the University of Toronto and worked in the United Nations in Sudan in 2007. Thanks for joining us today, Professor Aman. Thank you for having me. So President Omar al-Bashir originally had the support of the military and led this military in the war that ended up splitting the country and the forming of the country of South Sudan. Now, what made the military suddenly switch sides and turn against Bashir? Uh, this is a good question, but uh, what really is happening on the ground is that al-Bashir decided to plan this coup so it's a stage coup in reality. What happened is that he appointed this Ibn Auf as a, as a minister of defense and a and, uh, vice president just a few weeks ago, and then slowly started to plan his, his, uh, his way out of power without being extradited to the ICC. And um, what people on the ground now are saying, the opposition, members of the opposition, is that the regime is still intact. What happened is that they replaced al-Bashir was his vice president in order to maintain its grip in power for a longer period of time under the disguise of change. But it's not really any change, according to those on the ground. It doesn't meet the aspirations of the Sudanese people, this, this new announcement of the military council. I see. Now, why do you think that the military council refuses to extradite Bashir? Al-Bashir, you basically suggested why, but um, are they also perhaps uh, afraid that he will testify against those who committed war crimes during the civil war? Uh, that's a good question, but uh, most people are, are not aware of the fact that Ibn Auf himself is wanted by the United, uh, by, by the United States for, for atrocities against people in Darfur. So he himself is actually wanted for questioning uh, with, because he was the head of the, uh, the, the military uh, intelligence uh, during the war in Darfur, and he is actually accused of atrocities. So why would he turn, on, uh, uh, al -Bashir, uh, turn al Bashir over to the, the ICC when he himself could be end, uh, who could end up there as well. So, it, it, and we have to realize something. The, the leaders of the military uh, are, not, are not in sync with those lower ranking officers in mid range and junior officers in the army who are actually in support of the people and the demonstrations that are taking place in front of the uh, headquarters of the military. So there is a kind of crack in, within the army uh, that is taking place slowly and, and broiling, and it's going to be interesting to see what it's going to lead to in the next couple of days. Now, why have the protesters focused on President Omar al-Bashir, the individual, and just how responsible was he actually for the economic conditions that made life so difficult for the Sudanese people? He is uh, fully responsible. He's been the president in, of the Sudan for almost 30 years. So all the economic, political, social mismanagement of the country's resources has been under his leadership. So people are definitely holding him accountable for, for his actions or inactions. And uh, it's natural that the people don't just want al-Bashir to go, but they want the entire regime and the NCP, National Congress Party, to, to, to be dissolved and, to, and, and for a new transitional, civilian traditional government to take over. And that's why people are still demonstrating out on the street, insisting that it's, they don't need any more army officers in charge of the country. But what they're looking for and what they were fighting for in the last four months since December 14th is a transitional government, a civilian transitional government that would plan ahead and prepare the country for true, genuine democracy. So what do you think is actually going to happen now? Uh, will this happen, this uh, civilian transition? 
Uh, is this a public uprising, a revolution that will bring about democratic revolutions, or is it a military coup, and should we expect a general to take over the presidency for an extended period? And also, do we need to worry that uh, Sudan's civil war will restart now? It's actually both. It's a, it's a coup and a revolution at the same time. What do I mean by that? The NCP, the National Congress Party, staged this to, it's just ostensibly appearing as if it's a, a change, a genuine change, in the hope that it will satisfy the, uh, the demonstrators and to end the, uh, the sit-in that is taking place in front of the, uh, head, uh, the army headquarters. But on the other hand, uh, people on the street are continuing their demonstration, and it is a revolution that they're, uh, they're demanding more than what is being given to them right now. It's not enough to have uh, military officers. It's, it's not good for them to have two years of, with a military council in charge. They want genuine change, democratic change, and transitional change that is led by civilians, especially those who were leading the, uh, the demonstrations, and, and the end to the regime, not just to al-Bashir, but even Ibn Auf himself, the leader of the Sudan right now, needs to go and needs to be held accountable for what he's, do what he's done in uh, Darfur. So, the, the change is not comprehensive. People see it as as a as just a, a trick by by the by the leading party to try to calm people down. People are determined to continue in the hope that they would whatever they were calling for from the beginning, which is to change the regime, is going to happen. It will happen soon. And what about the possibility of renewed civil war and the peace agreement? What what's going to happen with that? And the renewed civil war, I don't see it as a, as a, as a large possibility, but what, what I see is that we might f have some violence, especially if the, the, the military council that is in charge now decides to crack uh, and, and violently end the, the, the sit-in. If it does that, I think junior officers and mid-level officers in the army will definitely stand by the people, and that might lead to some sort of civil strife and violence. But to what level, to what extent, we don't know. But at the moment, it, it's very delicate. And as we speak right now, people are, uh, there are some rumors now saying that even Ibn Auf himself is facing some, uh, some, some severe resistance from the army. And even some rumors go as far as saying that he has been detained. Hmm. What, we, what's going to happen in the next couple of days is, is unclear, but a civil war, I don't think so. Okay, well, we're going to leave it there for now, but we'll definitely come back to you as the situation develops. Thanks, Professor Ahmad, for having joined us today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining the Real News Network.